Hala Diab, a Syrian writer and filmmaker based here in London. And you're also a spokeswoman, I understand, for the Organization for Democracy and Freedom in Syria. Uh, now, let me ask you first about the EU arms embargo. Uh, that has effectively been lifted, but you say that arming the rebels will not be good. Why? Uh, because what is happening now um, with lifting the embargo, that will be a disaster for, for the, the conflict in Syria. Because lifting the arm embargo will not stop the conflict in Syria. It will d increase uh, the conflict in Syria and the cycle of violence. What will oblige the opposition to come into negotiating table with Assad if they know they have now the support of the West in order to give them arms and to win on the ground? And also at the same time, the international community should have impressed other countries like the Gulf, like Qatar and Saudi, which is actually sending jihadis to Syria to fight and also which is fueling the conflict in Syria and which is already sending arms to Syria. I mean, the, the main... Can I just interrupt for a second? You mentioned, you know, bringing the opposition to the table, but on the other hand, they're also still trying to bring Assad to the table. But how do you do that? But uh, lifting uh, the, the embargo on, on arms will not bring Assad to the negotiating table because uh, that will not threaten the, the, the Syrian government because they are supported by the Russians and by, by the Hezbollah and by the Iranian. So the only way to bring this... Uh, to opposition, uh, the opposition and the regime to table is actually to stop uh, arming both sides and also to impressing both parties to, you know, uh, uh, try to seek uh, uh, political transition in, in, instead of, uh, of, of violence. Met, uh, like militarizing the uh, uh, conflict in Syria will not stop the bloodshed in, so on the ground. So you're saying a political solution, diplomacy is the way to go. But I have to say, it's been two years now. Diplomacy doesn't seem to have worked. 80,000 people have died. What do you say to those people who say it's not just about arming the rebels, but there should be even more military intervention. But it is not only the regime which is committing war crime in Syria. It's also the opposition. It's also the rebels. It's also the Jabha al Nusra front, which is fighting hand by hand with the Syrian army. We are actually handing arms to the extremists, to the jihadis in Syria. We are not as Syrian people. I have not really voted for the Syrian opposition, not for the Syrian council, because they don't represent the Syrian people. Who actually fighting in the ground is not actually a battle between the government and Syrian people. It's a battle between Shia and Sunni. It's a battle between Hezbollah and Iran and Russia, uh, 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 China, and at the same time, the international community or the West and the, and the Gulf com government. I've never seen through, during these two, uh, two years as a Syrian anything which has been done for the Syrian people. Syrian people now are actually paying the price for the conflict in Syria. We have refugees, we have people who are dying from both sides. So what do you say to those people who, go, who say the, that the chaos has enveloped Syria and the only thing that can change the game now is full-fledged full-fledged Western military intervention, no-fly zone, the whole bit. What do you say to that? I say that look at Iraq, and look at Afghanistan, and look at Libya. Tell me one example in Middle East where we have really succeeded in solving our problem and our political problem through arms. We need dialogue and we need solution. political transition. Well, hopefully both sides will sit down and talk uh, sometime in the very near future. Thank you very much, Halad Diab, uh, for speaking to us there.